Welcome back to MedBoard Visuals, a focused primary care board review where you can relax and study for the boards at the same time. Okay, we are presently in the gastroenterology section, esophageal disease, subsection dysphagia. Let us begin. All right, so dysphagia is defined as difficulty or abnormality of swallowing. Now, we need to look for clues to the etiology and how we're going to find them. The history, of course. Okay, so the question we have to ask is, dysphagia caused by, number one, solids only, number two, solids then liquids, or number three, solids and liquids. So, let's go over each one of these categories in detail here. Okay, we're going to break this up into three different legs as we just talked about here. Solids only, solids, then liquids, solids, and liquids. Let's take a look at solids only first. And we're talking about things like Schatzky's ring, webs, or eosinophilic esophagitis. All right, so this is a esophageal ring, and this is an esophageal web. Now, with the web, it's thinner, often upper esophagus, versus a ring which is thicker and it's often lower esophageal. Now, notice as well, it's also concentric. It goes all the way around. Now, a web is eccentric. It goes about halfway around. A web is also associated with anemia, and we call this plumber vincent syndrome, although we don't really know why the anemia actually occurs. All right, let's now take a look at a Schatzky's ring on an upper GI right here, okay? So let's say the patient is going to swallow a hamburger now, sometimes, but not always, it intermittently gets stuck on the Schatzky's ring and then eventually makes its way down. This is why we're looking for intermittent dysphagia with the Schatzky's ring as an indicator of Schatzky's ring. Treatment dilation and PPIs after dilation because it's theorized that maybe acid is causing the Schatzky's ring. Okay, this is eosinophilic esophagitis. It has kind of a scalloped appearance. We must do a biopsy in order to diagnose this has a stacked circular ring appearance, widest papules or micro abscesses may be seen. Some may actually get strictures, and if they do, it's actually more of a progressive dysphagia. Serum eosinophils are increased in approximately half of the patients. Now, there's a strong association with allergic conditions, example, asthma, food or environmental allergies. The treatment, allergen avoidance, PPIs, some may respond, and topical steroids. Okay, so keep in mind what we're looking for to diagnose any of these conditions with solids only is intermittent dysphagia. All right, let's take a look now at solids, then liquids. We're talking stricture, cancer, systemic sclerosis. Let's take a closer look here. Here we have the esophagus, and there's a narrowing. A growth is happening slowly, all right? But guess what? Liquids can still make their way down. However, solids are going to have a more difficult time. That's why solids first are going to get stuck before liquids. So solids, then liquids. Now, as it progresses, more narrowing happens. Liquids eventually also have a difficult time making their way down. That's why, again, it's solids, then liquids. All right, so if we have a GERD history, think of stricture. If we have weight loss, anemia, elderly patient, or GERD history, think of cancer. If the patient has systemic sclerosis history, think of systemic sclerosis. All right, this is usually more of a progressive dysphagia, and you can see why. All right, the next category, solids and liquids. We think of achalasia, distal esophageal spasm, DES, hypercontractile esophagus. Let's, take a first, let's first take a look at achalasia. This is degeneration slash denervation of the nerves to the esophagus. It classically has a bird beak appearance. This is due to an increased lower esophageal sphincter pressure. So if we eat a hamburger or if we drink some liquid, that's a liquid, they're both going to get stuck because that narrowing doesn't go away. And you can see why we can regurgitate undigested food. Again, solids and liquids, and it tends to be progressive often over years. So how do we treat this? Well, typically dilation, myotomy, and occasionally botulinum toxin, but not very often. All right, let's look at DES. So distal esophageal spasm. Here's a solid, a carrot, and here's some liquid. It occurs with both of them. That's why it's in this category here. Cold drinks, 
tends to make it worse. And guess what? A barium or upper GI swallow is not sensitive or specific, even though we show it. We actually need a manometry study to diagnose this. DES may present with chest pain. You have a contraction in your chest, and yes, this is intermittent. It contracts occasionally. Okay, let's now discuss hypercontractile esophagus also in this category. High pressures on manometry, however, the sequential coordination contractions are normal, previously called nutcracker esophagus. Again, this is also intermittent. Sometimes it contracts, sometimes it doesn't. Treatment for DES or hypercontractile esophagus, limited data, but PPIs if GERD is present. Peppermint oil may help with chest pain, helps to relax the smooth muscle. Calcium channel blockers may help. If above not effective, use clinical judgment with each patient. All right, again, hypercontractile esophagus, intermittent. Okay, the key question, what is this caused by? That's how we're going to make the diagnosis here. Okay, let's move on to the next section here. Next steps. Next, find out if there's a history of these. Caustic injury, surgery for larynx slash esophageal cancer, history of complex esophageal stricture, prior radiation, or suspect possible esophageal diverticuli. Let's take a look. Here we see a diverticuli in the esophagus. Food or liquids may fill the diverticulum, may regurgitate or aspirate when lying down. If any of these are present, then order a barium swallow. Note, not everyone agrees to do a barium swallow before an EGD. All right, let's bring on our patient here. He has a question. So I still don't get why you are doing a barium swallow over an EGD first. The thinking is that a blind intubation of the proximal esophagus may cause a perforation with the below conditions. Having knowledge of possible trouble may help prevent a perforation when EGD is performed. If none of the below are present, then we order an EGD first. Okay, let's assume none of those are present. Ah, now we order an EGD, and we're looking for structural abnormalities. Rings slash web, strictures, diverticulum, esophagitis, tumors. Okay, now I get it. But what if the EGD is normal? Then ask if dysphagia to solids alone. What if the answer is yes? Then order a barium swallow if not already done. Okay, so normal EGD, yes. Dysphagia to solids alone, yes. Barium swallow if not done already. Why order a barium swallow if you just did an EGD? A contracted esophagus may hide a distal esophageal ring slash web. A barium swallow is therefore more sensitive. Makes sense. An extrinsic compression may also be seen with a barium swallow. Now, if the barium swallow is normal, then we need a manometry study. All right, let's go over this here. We have a normal barium swallow manometry. What if the EGD is normal and there is dysphagia to both solids and liquids? Okay, that situation is present here. Manometry. Yes. And what we're looking for in this situation is DES or hypercontractile esophagus or systemic sclerosis. But wait a second, Doc. My grandmother had a stroke and then could not swallow solids or liquids and had a normal EGD and manometry. Great question. You are describing a neurologic dysfunction that can be either upper motor neuron or lower motor neuron. Okay, here is the brainstem. This is the bulbar area, and we see the nerves coming from the bulbar area, lower motor neurons. All right? Well, guess what? These obviously supply the swallowing muscles right here. So, bulbar palsy. We can get weak swallowing, trouble initiating or controlling swallowing if we have a bulbar palsy, if these nerves don't work properly. Also, we can have an upper motor neuron abnormality right here, okay? This is called a pseudo-bulbar palsy. It's not really in the bulbar area. Spastic discoordinated contractions can occur. It's an upper motor neuron problem. Diagnose this by a suggestive history and then a video swallow. Okay, summary caused by 
Solids, solids then liquids, solids and liquids. Ask the question, if it's solids only, esophageal ring, esophageal web, eosinophilic esophagitis. If it's solids then liquids, think stricture, cancer or systemic sclerosis. If we have solids and liquids, think achalasia, DES, hypercontractile esophagus. Now, we need to perform a barium swallow if any of these below are present. But some go straight to an EGD instead of a barium swallow. But let's assume a barium swallow was done and it was negative. If that's the case, we do an EGD to rule out a structural abnormality. Okay, if this is normal, then we need to ask the question, is this dysphagia to solids alone? If the answer is yes, a barium swallow if not done already. All right, we're looking for a structural abnormality missed on EGD, example, an esophageal ring. Now, if it's dysphagia to solids and liquids, then esophageal manometry. We're looking for a motility disorder. And don't forget, neurologic dysfunction can also cause dysphagia, typically with solids and liquids, exclude after anatomic abnormalities have been ruled out. Now, we can have a bulbar palsy, which is lower motor neuron, or we can have an upper motor neuron dysfunction. This is a pseudo bulbar palsy. Look for weak or discoordinated swallowing and diagnose with a video swallow. All right, questions. At this point, I want you to pause the video, match the left side with the right side. We'll come back after you're done. Okay, hope you got all these questions correct here. And this now brings us to the end of this video, dysphagia in the gastroenterology section. Join us now for the next video in this section. And as always, if you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe, press like, and ring the bell for notifications. Thank you from MedBoardVisuals.com.